it's so good to see you guys again. Sorry, Hammy's being a bit of a naughty boy right now, so he's not able to join us today, if you can hear that. That's him biting the cage, if you can. Um, we are actually just coming out of our Awana Clubs meeting, thus our matching shirts. We're actually not trying to be cute and matchy this time. These are our uniforms. And Awana stands for Approved Workmen Are Not Ashamed. Little salute. And, <laughs> and if you guys want to join, let us know. But until then, we hope that you guys are having an awesome week. We can't wait to see you guys again. I feel it in my spirit that our reunion is nigh at long last. Amen. <laughs> and can't wait to see you guys. And now let's open in a word of prayer. I'll take only about 10 or 15 minutes to read the entire chapter of Mark chapter 1. This is my favorite book because it's just, Mark is just like me, but I do my best to teach what I know. Okay, let me get to the word right now. Okay, this is a small book. It has only 15 chapters chapters and I'm going to uh, read only this first chapter for now. It has about 43 verses. I'm going to read in five minutes. Just watch, okay? Hear me. Mark 1. John the Baptist prepares the way. Verses from 1 to 8. Baptism and temptation of Jesus, 9 to 12. Calling the calling of the first disciple, fourteen to nineteen, 
Jesus drives out the evil spirit. Verses 21 to 26. Jesus heals many. Verses from 29 to 34. Jesus prays in the solitary place. 35 to 39. Man with leprosy. 40 to 43. See how quickly I read the Bible? Is it easy, right? Because we know the story. Mark doesn't tell you about the Jesus birth, how we, uh, Joseph and Mary traveled and all that stuff. He doesn't know. Uh, doesn't He knows, but he doesn't say anything. So also, we are Christians. We know about Jesus' birth and everything, but we have to highlight what is all about and apply those things to our life. This is how I do. John the Baptist prepares the way. That's the thing, you know, before Jesus could come into his ministry, John paced the way, saying this is the way he is going to come. Uh, prepare the way, repent. That's all. Even the foot of his sandal I cannot tie. That's what he says. So we as a, it's, I baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but no, water. water, I baptize you with water, I, but the one who is coming will be baptized, baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what it says, right? That's the first uh, eight verses right there. We know that. That's how you have to read. Secondly, you have to go for the baptism and the temptation of Jesus. Baptism is a very important part in our life. Once we accept Jesus Christ, we have to acknowledge that we die to sin and live for Christ. That's what Jesus did. He set us an example in these verses. So Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came on him and announced that he is a favorite son. This is my son whom I love. With you, with you I am well pleased. That's what the Holy Spirit says. And after that, what happens? He gets into the temptation, 40 days. Te temptations. We read about that. And in the desert, it is tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and angels attended him. Wild animals and angels attended him. Even when we accept, accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior, when we get baptized, we get tempted. Not only around the world or around us, but even in our churches, there are wild animals. In our families, there are wild animals. Everywhere there are wild animals, they'll attack us, you know, spiritually. They'll reject you, they'll uh, just say something on you, and the way you talk will be different, and they'll criticize you, they'll make fun of you, but it's okay. That's all that Satan can do. But you have to be careful because the angels are with you. If we take to uh, go to the next point, the calling of first disciples. Jesus, after that, he went and called all the people. The disciples already knew him. But he goes and gives them a responsibility and calls them. And this phrase, I'll make you fishers of men, it's not a new phrase, what Jesus did. It is a phrase did by the Roman Empire people that who are responsible. You know, they'll bait. This is a bait like, you know, I'll make you this, I'll make you that. Come and join us. So Jesus is saying the same method, join me. I'll make you fishers of men. Instead of fishing the fish, you can fish men and lead others to God. So there's a calling. It's a calling for each and everybody. People are talking about calling, calling, oh, you have, must have a call and everything. God has already called you for his service to teach, preach, and get the gospel around the world. Baptize him with the water, water, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 28 19, and 18. So those are the words, you know, we have to follow those and become his disciples. Next is, Jesus drives out the evil spirit. Here, you know, Jesus goes to the, on the Sabbath, he goes to the synagogue. You know, what's it synagogue, a difference between synagogue and temple? 
in temple you cannot go because it's only the high priest can go into the temple and do the sacrifices synagogue is a place where people are gathered where we can go and teach under the authority of the leader rabbi so you can that's why god jesus just he went into the synagogue and started preaching there we can see a man possessed with the evil spirit and the evil spirit acknowledges him that he is the son of God and he is Jesus of Nazareth. You know, he identifies who he is. You know, then Jesus said, be quiet, come out of him. Most of the thing, you know, we go to church, we go everywhere, you know, they teach everything. But they don't teach the whole thing. Sometimes, you know, the devils are in the church too. We have to drive with the devil and we have to be careful about the devil we have to rebuke him to be quiet because he knows you he knows jesus too the wrong teaching wrong preaching don't buy that jesus came into the world to redeem you and i he died on the cross for you and i that's all you need to know you don't know to hear the gospel of prosperity gospel of healing and all that stuff you know when you have jesus with you when you go to church hear what the preacher says don't bring back the bad stuff you're going to worship god bring god to your house not the devil rebuke the devil and leave the devil at the church you bring jesus to your home that's what the following uh, subject is jesus heals many here we can after going coming out of synagogue jesus goes to uh, Simon's house. Simon's mother was ill. So Jesus prayed over her and she was healed instantly, immediately. And started, the lady started serving her, them. That's what Jesus does. Jesus' his healing is instant. His prayer, he answers prayer immediately. Only thing we have to be abide by his rules and regulation and obey him. Obey God and live all the consequences to him. He can ha handle whatever you want, healing or anything. So that's what Jesus is saying here. After that, Jesus, you know, after doing all this thing, he was tired, right? We do get tired, right? Doing all the homework and other worldly work. We go home and we get tired. But look at Jesus, what he did. After that, he went to a solitary place. That's Jesus' place in solitary place, verses 35 to 38. He went to a solitary places, place and started praying. That's how we have to do. We have to pick a place in your own home. You have to pick your own timing. This my timing is early in the morning because that's the way my body works. Because from the beginning, I was waking up at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. I devote that time to God. After that, I'll start my day. Why, why in the morning? Because you start with praising God and asking God's wisdom to lead you, guide you, God, you protect you and watch over you. That take care of the entire day of your life. He will give you the wisdom. He will give you the knowledge and everything if you spend some time in the morning. So I prefer morning. After this, I want to focus more on this last part. A man with leprosy, verses from 40 to 43. Jesus, this man was a leprosy. Leprosy is just like a sin. You know, it cannot be cured. Your sin cannot be cured at all. It will get deep into your sin, bone, uh, skin, bone, and at last it will kill you. Sin is the same way. One sin will lead you to another one, another one to another one. Lie, this is just like a lie. You know, we lie to compromise that lie. We speak another lie and it will go on and on. If people who are comfortable with your lie, you start lying more. Sin is like that. You know, if you cut it off at the early stage, it will go away. Look at what Jesus said. If we bring our sins to Jesus, this is what he'll do. What he did was he touched him and spoke the word. 
we all need Jesus' touch. Unless he touches us, our sin will be not be forgiven. We have to ask for forgiveness, but he has to touch us. And we have to believe the words of what, what the Bible says and promises. And keep those things in your heart and mind and soul. You know, when you practice these things, you know, touching, we need touch of God. We need a cleansing, cleansing by the word of God. We have to renew our cleansing every day by reading the Bible. Once this thing is done, you know, if you see, and he says, Jesus says, go, verse 44, see that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for you, for your cleansing as testimony to them. Okay, if you go to Leviticus 13 and 19, there, no, don't read now, it's a big chapters, verses uh, Leviticus 13, chapter 13 and 14, it talks about skin disease. Once you get pure from the, clean from the sin disease, you have to take two things, two birds, two pigeons, two ca uh, what's that, goat, two cows or anything like that, you know, one will be sacrificed and other one will set free. I like there's a story in the 14th chapter, it talks about two birds. One bird is cut and put in the bottle and another bird is dipped into that bird and set it free. After this, the uh, priest will take the blood and he, he will apply a blood on your right ear. And you'll take a blood, drop of blood and uh, apply on your thumb, right thumb. And you'll apply on your uh, right foot, the what you call big toe, toe, big toe. Okay, on the big toe. What it represents is when he touches the blood on your ear, that's the word of God. When the blood touches your thumb, that is the work of God. When he touches the foot, it is walk of God. So when you healed from all the sickness and disease and your sins are forgiven, that's what Jesus has done for you. With his blood, he's touching your ear to hear his word and act, work for him. And walk, walk the walk, talk the, what do you say? Talk the talk. Talk the talk, walk the walk, you know? Walk the talk. You have to live by it. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus, what happens after that, he puts oil on the blood. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. Unless you are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will not come on you. Hear me. Just washing of the blood, forgiving of sin, that's okay. But you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you how not to sin, how to overcome your temptations, how to overcome everything. That's what the Holy Spirit does. We need Holy Spirit in our lives, on day-to-day -day lives to lead a pure and clean life. So let's offer ourselves, you know, let's get washed by the blood of the Lamb and let's fill with the Holy Spirit and walk in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy life. We should be witness not only to our family, around the people around us, our neighbors, and throughout the world. People will be looking at you. You know, you may see, I may preach and whatever, I can do 101 things, good things out of the house. But if I come inside the house, who am I? That's what matters. So let's, you know, commit ourselves to the Lord. Let's get washed by the blood of the Lamb. Let be baptized in the Holy Spirit and walk in holiness of life. Amen. 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 That was a wonderful message, wasn't it, boys and girls? Let's continue to.
put our trust in God and ask him to be our guide and ask him to continue to guide us in the path that we must take. It is so very important for us to always be in the will of our Father. So that's our prayer for you. We're glad to be with you and we are happy to um, do this as long as necessary. You know, many of us have started coming to back to church again and that is a wonderful thing and I'm excited that we can also get started in, in meeting in person really, really soon. That's our prayer for all of us. Hope to see you there soon in person, but until then, God bless you, God keep you. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for the message that you have given to us, O oh Father, to prepare our hearts, O oh God, and to prepare our minds and our thoughts, O oh Father, so that we, whatever we do, O oh God, help us to be consecrated, to do your will and your purpose, O oh Father. God, we pray that you will continue to be with us, O oh God, as the children continue with their schoolwork, O oh Father, starting tomorrow. God, we pray that you will enable them to pay attention during this time of virtual learning, O oh God, it is so very easy to lose our concentration. So, Father, we pray, God, that you will instill in the children's hearts, O oh God, a desire to stay focused and help them, Father, to continue to learn virtually, O oh God, and to be able to do things, O oh Father, the way that, they, that, that it is meant to be. And God, we pray, Lord, that you will always remind us that we are not alone, that we are, you are always with us. And even during the isolation time, O oh Father, it is so good to know that we can trust in you and rely on you for all of our needs. So we commit each and every one of us in your care. We pray for the teachers, O oh God. Give them patience and give them wisdom, O oh God, in a way to communicate with the youngsters while they are meeting with their youngsters virtually, O oh Father. Help the students to have respect for their teachers. Help them to display proper manners and help them, Lord, to learn together, O oh Father, so that they will be great citizens of tomorrow. And for their spiritual walk, O oh God, we pray that you'll continue to be with them. Guide them, O oh Father, protect them and watch over them and give them an earnest desire to start and end the day in prayer and to grow stronger and grow closer to you each and every day. We commit them in your care, O oh God. We give them all to you. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, it's that time again. We are almost done. We, no, we are done. And looking forward to seeing you again soon. And until we meet again, I hope you will continue to watch, listen, act, and pray. Always pray. And trust God to do all things in your lives. Bye now.